BC Choice, it's the Stranglers. BC Choice. This is the story of the Stranglers. One of the most musical, prolific, enduring and controversial bands from the punk era. The Stranglers became part of the punk scene. But they were never really considered a punk band proper. They were too old, they were too musical, they were too technically proficient. And besides, they'd been around for a year or two, appearing with such bands as Dr. Kilgood, The Jam, The 101ers, Kilburn and The High Road, part of the uh, burgeoning pub rock scene. And now I think I'll go in for a drink or outside this public house. And I've never been known to stay outside a public house for an enormously long length of time. OK, on the backdrop, we've got Jet Black. He's very good on a quick roll of the skins. No drug references, of course, meant in that. OK, Jet, take it away. I was the one who actually woke up one day and said, I want to form a band. But of course, uh, it wasn't a band until there were people in it. And although I was looking for people with musical ideas that were interesting, all my, my searching for people really came to nothing. And the people were kind of met by accident. Yeah, what do you think of that then? Pretty symbolic, guys. We've got the demon of the keyboards on a massive swelling organ. Dave Greenfield, the only man who can write a right run across clue on the keyboards. I was in Germany. I used to play a lot in Germany in my youth, different bands. Went back over to have a holiday with my girlfriend. I live with my aunt, who helped me out a lot in the old days, uh, to keep her eye on the music papers, basically to see if anything came up. And she saw an ad in the Melody Maker. Organist wanted to join soft rock group, I believe the phrasing was. Great, that was absolutely amazing, Dave. You put Rick Wakeman in the shade there. On the far left, we got the demon of the semen. And I don't mean that as a nautical term. John Jack Bernal on the bloody bass. I don't know if you ever became a punk band. Um, certainly, some of the attitudes, some of the attitudes of the punks, um, uh, crossed over into the way we we actually felt and behaved. But um, I don't think we were really considered a punk band. I considered myself to be a punk rocker. Oh, that was amazing! It's taken him all day to learn that bass solo, and I'm going to try and give you. A little bit of the psychedelic lead guitar, just like, you know, just like John McLaughlin and Paul McCartney and all those creeps do. OK, you ready? One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six. There were very few places for people with sort of short hair like us and, and straight jeans and leather jackets to hang out and it seemed to, the only other people were the, the punks who we could hang out with and, and more and more people with shorter hair were coming to our shows from early 76. <laughs> the audiences began to grow until the pubs couldn't contain them. A record deal with United Artists followed, and the Stranglers had at least two albums worth of material already written. Enter Rattus Novigicus. Didn't have the money round to buy a Murray Thal. Been around and seen a lot to shake me anyhow. Baked and barrels, sometimes I admit I even stole. The worst crime that I ever did was playing rock and roll. This is quickly followed by No More Heroes. I think by the time we, we'd actually got a record release and we were uh, geeking furiously almost every night of the week, our music was beginning to take on a very aggressive edge. First time I saw them was at Strathclyde University on a Saturday night. 
when they had been booked in as a replacement for a heavy metal band, the Ian Gillan Band. We'd gone up in the ice cream van in 1976, and uh, the people were not happy. <laughs> they were not happy. It's not going to make any difference, you know, you shouting out. It's not make any difference. They were getting booed, they were getting balls chucked at them, the amplifiers toppled over, the audience were gobbing at them. Jean-Jacques Bonner was karateing people off the stage. It was a phenomenal punk rock performance. Look, I've got a microphone. I can speak about 2,000 times louder than any of you idiots, all right? However loud you shout, shut up, bunch of morons! They wanted to tear us apart. They, um, we had to barricade ourselves in this, um, in this dressing room. I'll never forget. And we actually managed to, because we didn't have any roker or anything at the time, so we managed to put our equipment back in the ice cream van and escape from Glasgow. But the stranglers delighted in controversy and confusion. Rock goes to college. We, we, we were on it. And um, we were the college was uh, Surrey University in Guildford, which of course we had a bit of a relationship with. There was a huge posse of kids, or our mates and everything, outside our dressing room. So we we smuggled them in through the window and smuggled them in, into the hall. And you know about 50 people came in this way, and uh, we found out subsequently that they were being escorted out by the rugby uh, players who were acting as security for that gig. So we just pissed off with the whole university thing in Guildford. So in the second number we just um, destroyed our, our kit and uh, Hugh uh, and Jerk made an announcement I think about elitism. <laughs> Guildford University never represented Guildford. We high planted elitist audiences. I think the next day in the papers it said something like commercial suicide, um, you'll never play in the music business again, and you'll never be on the BBC again, and, um, and uh, what is this fil being filmed by? I'm sorry about this, it came as much a surprise to us as it does to you. But next Come, we'll bring a professional band. People often said we were deliberately provocative. Guilty, absolutely correct. Of course we were. That was the name of the game. Now, watch out for this lot coming in shots next week. They are supreme. Stragglers. Our reputation always tended to precede us, and uh, I think the first time we were called to the top of the pops, very reluctantly, by certain people in the offices there. Uh, in keeping with our tradition of confusing, uh, we were expected to trash the, the dressing rooms. In fact, it was widely reported that the BBC had better watch out. But on the contrary, when we got there, we asked for some cleaning materials and the vacuum cleaner, and we completely cleaned the place up and people couldn't believe it. They, they thought, what's going on? And they still did not get the joke. Oh, 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 oh.